This is the Dixon House and Barn on Glover Road. When the BC Electric Railway arrived in 1910, it added an extra spark to development at Milner. The Hudson's Bay Company had farmed these lands for decades back in the 1800s. Now, settlers were raising dairy cattle, poultry, and pigs, and the new railway provided them with a direct link to markets in New Westminster and Vancouver. Dixon House was built during a most unlikely time, the middle of the First World War. It's named after the family that farmed here until 1935. It was one of the first homes in the area to get electricity. Dutch immigrants John and Catherine van der Vechte bought the farm from the Cummings family. It's where their daughter Anya grew up with her three siblings, and the family would farm here for almost 50 years. My name is Anya Ritter. My maiden name was van der Vechte, but um, I don't suppose a lot of people can do the G thing. <laughs> In uh, 1958, he had the opportunity to buy his own farm, which we're standing on here now. And um, as kids, we, it was another adventure for us. We all got brand new bikes because we had to bike to school now, <laughs> not be driven. And so that was wonderful. Um, for my parents, it was a struggle. It was a hard life, but my mother always said it was a hard life, but a good life. My father started out with a herd of 20 Guernsey cows. Then a few years later, I think maybe a year later, he decided to go into Holsteins and we had between 20 and 22 Holstein cows that he milked. But he did a lot of renovations to the, to the barn and um, that of course was the money maker so the house had to wait. <laughs> the house did need a lot of renovations and that all came in time. But we had a, a wood stove and a wood furnace and um, lots of work for us kids. All those kids were involved in the hang, um, whether it was my sister driving the tractor and Tony and I and Dad throwing the bills on the wagon. Um, mother would be in the kitchen cooking and sometimes we'd eat out in the field if there was a lot of hay to be picked up. So nobody took the time to come to the house and she would take the food out there and it would be like a picnic. The 42-acre property was eventually sold to the township of Langley. In 2008, Langley Heritage Society started a two-year restoration. Inside Dixon House, even the original chandelier has been returned to the dining room. I'm Fred Pepin and I'm the uh, president of Langley Heritage Society at the moment and I have been doing the restoration on a number of the buildings the last several years. So this is one of the projects we're quite proud of. Well, I, we were restoring the house for a couple of, we worked on it for a couple of years and I was watching this barn every day, <coughs> seeing it deteriorate and wondering how we could justify spending the money that was going to be required to fix it and how to go about it. And finally, I after we finished the house and we had a big storm and the barn suffered quite a lot of damage, I decided it was something we had to do. We couldn't leave it any longer. So we had a plan together and we started on it. There was only a handful of buildings that are as um, professionally built as this building was. At a period of time when this type of construction was dying out, these are very professional people that built this, a couple of carpenters from Ontario that put the barn together. It's a very intricately big post and beam building, all tongue and groove, uh, mortise and tenon and wooden dowels and timbers up to 40 feet long in the barn. It's just incredible how they did that with just the manpower they had. We're on the upper floor of the barn. Uh, we're looking at the timber frame construction where the beams are mortised into the big upright beams and held in with wooden pegs. Same with up the brace, braces are mortised in. You can't get them out. The only way to get them out is to cut them. They have to be, they're put in be, while it's on the ground and it all goes up in one piece. This barn is 50 feet from the ground to the peak of the roof. It is very, very high. 
The roof required 136 sheets of 5 8 plywood, which is quite a challenge to get it all up there. And all the roofing, too, that's squares and squares of shingles we had to take up there. Uh, it was a lot of work putting a roof on this thing. But it was nice to sit up there and watch the traffic go by at lunchtime. Uh, it was a nice view from up there. Dixon House and Barn are still being used and cared for, more than 100 years after being built. What do I get out of it? Well, I retired and I didn't I needed something to do and I decided I didn't need to uh, do these kind of jobs for myself and that this was something a legacy that I wanted to leave for the community so I just decided to carry on as long as I could doing it. So. Yeah it's uh, emotional, lots of good memories, some not so good but that's, that's life. Um, and I'm really happy that it's still here.